Hi, my name is Jolie Weiss, and I'm an infectious disease program manager at the Arizona Department of Health Services, and I'm going to provide a brief overview of COVID-19. Some of the topics that will be discussed in this presentation are transmission, symptoms, infectious period, testing, and common vocabulary. The coronavirus, or COVID-19, is a disease caused by a virus that can spread from person to person. The virus that causes COVID-19 is a new coronavirus originally identified in Wuhan, China, and has now spread across the world. The name COVID-19 comes from the CO in corona, the V for virus, and ID from identified in 2019. The virus itself is known as Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2. So how is COVID-19 transmitted or spread? The virus is thought to spread mainly from person to person. COVID-19 spreads easily through respiratory droplets uh, that are produced when the infected per person coughs, sneezes, or talks. And droplets can land in the mouths, noses, or eyes of people who are nearby or can be inhaled into the lungs of those within close proximity. COVID-19 spreads easily and sustainably between people. The more closely a person interacts with others and the longer the interaction, the higher the risk of spread. So one equation uh, we think about is time plus duration of exposure equals increased risk of infection. COVID-19 may also be spread by touching of surface or objects that has the virus on it, and then touching your mouth, nose, or eyes. Additionally, we know that some individuals are capable of transmitting the virus at least 48 hours before their symptoms start. So what are some of the clinical features? Symptoms can range from mild to severe illness and even death. These symptoms typically appear between two and 14 days after exposure. The most common symptoms include fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Other symptoms can include chills and rigors, or shivering, headache, loss of taste or smell, vomiting, diarrhea, and nausea. And additionally, some clinical complications can include acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, pneumonia, and septic shock. The incubation period is the time from when the virus enters the body to the time someone starts to develop symptoms. For COVID-19, this period can range from two days to 14 days, with the average or median time for symptoms to appear being five days. And for the purpose of our work as case investigators, two weeks is the key time period to remember. So what body fluids can spread infection? Mainly, it'll be those from your upper and lower respiratory tract. This can be through coughing, sneezing, and respiratory droplets. The virus has been isolated from respiratory, blood, urine, and stool specimens. It is not yet known whether other non-respiratory body fluids from an infected person, including vomit, urine, breast milk, or semen, can contain viable infectious virus. So when is somebody infectious? The onset and duration of viral shedding and the period of infectiousness for COVID-19 is not completely known yet. But in most instances, it is believed that people with mild to moderate illness 
are only infectious for about 10 days. For individuals with severe illness, such as requiring a stay in the ICU, or for those severely immunocompromised, the time they could still spread the disease could be up to 20 days. However, it's also possible that the virus genetic material may be detectable in the upper or lower respiratory tract for weeks or even months after illness onset, and people may test positive for longer than they're actually able to spread the virus to others. And this is one reason we do not recommend a person get tested again after their isolation period is over. Asymptomatic infection are those with no symptoms or outward appearance of illness is common and transmission can occur despite the absence of symptoms. And yes, it is believed that individuals are capable of transmitting the virus at least 48 hours or two days before their symptoms actually start. Now for some information about testing for COVID-19. The nasopharyngeal or NP swab has been the specimen of choice to detect the virus. It's a nice long Q-tip like swab that goes up your nose until it tickles your brain. And recently ASU and other universities and companies have developed a spit test that appears to accurately identify the virus and is a much easier way to collect samples and does not require additional use of PPE. The saliva testing is used to detect the virus DNA. And there are two types of diagnostic testing to confirm the presence of the virus. There's PCR testing, which detects the virus's genetic material. And there's antigen testing, which detects specific proteins on the surface of the virus. Besides diagnostic testing, there is also serology or antibody testing, which can be used to determine if somebody was previously infected with COVID-19. This is typically a blood test, and it looks for antibodies that were made by your immune system in response to a threat. Antibodies can take several days or weeks to develop. Typically, results are displayed as IgG, which indicates a past infection, or IgM, which indicates a more current infection. Because COVID-19 can spread very easily between people, it is very important to identify those people who came into close contact with a case. So who is considered a close contact? So it is somebody who was within six feet of an infected person for at least 15 minutes, starting from two days before their illness onset, or for asymptomatic patients, it's two days prior to the date their sample was collected until the time the patient is released from isolation. So again, that's at least 10 days after onset or sample collection date if they were asymptomatic. And the close contact can occur while caring for, living with, visiting, or sharing a healthcare waiting area or a room with a COVID case. Close contact can also mean having direct contact with infectious secretions of a COVID-19 case. So being coughed on, sharing cups, kissing, while not wearing recommended personal protective equipment or PPE, such as gowns, gloves, NIOSH certified disposable N95 masks, and eye protection. 
And even if the sick person is wearing a cloth face covering, a person having close contact is considered exposed. All close contacts to a confirmed COVID-19 case should be quarantined for 14 days. When dealing with COVID cases and contacts, there are several important terms that will be used, in particular, isolation and quarantine. Many people use these terms interchangeably, but there are important distinctions. So isolation is for symptomatic people or for those who have tested positive for COVID. This prevents people from infecting others and it lasts until the person is no longer contagious. So that's at least 10 days past symptom onset and at least 24 hours without a fever and without the use of fever reducers like Tylenol and also with some significant improvement in their respiratory symptoms and other symptoms, like their cough and shortness of breath. For severe cases of COVID, so those that were in the ICU, or those individuals who are severely immunocompromised, such as undergoing cancer treatment, those folks should be in isolation for 20 days. Now quarantine are for those individuals who are asymptomatic, but have had an exposure to a confirmed COVID case. So again, could be you've traveled to a high risk area or you've had close contact of a confirmed case. And this prevents people from infecting others in the event that they do develop symptoms. And the quarantine lasts for 14 days from their last date of exposure. And if you don't develop an illness, then you can be released from quarantine. And for COVID, since many people do not develop any symptoms at all, this quarantine period is very important to prevent the spread. Some other terms that are common include physical distancing. And this is for everybody. We want everyone to maintain at least six feet between you and the other person. It could include working from home instead of at the office. It could include closing schools or switching to online classes, visiting loved ones by electronic devices instead of in person, and canceling or postponing conferences and large meetings. And this is, again, compared to quarantining, which is staying at home and not going out at all. Also, recommendations for quarantine include using standard hygiene and washing hands frequently, not sharing things like towels and utensils, not having any visitors over at your house, and staying at least six feet away from other people within your household. And these are just some examples of some infographics that ADHS has available that further explains close contacts and isolation period that you can use. And finally, it is important to understand how we can help stop the spread of COVID-19, especially since there is currently no vaccination to protect against the disease. Recommendations include staying home as much as possible and avoiding close contact with others. Wear a face mask that covers your nose and mouth in public settings. Clean and disinfect frequently touched surfaces and wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. That's all we have today. So thank you very much for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out 
to the COVID investigation team at our email address, which is covidinvestigations at azdhs.gov. Thanks.